Hello YouTube, this is Frugal, and this is the much requested Frugal's Guide to Using Easy Dot Camera Add-on for FSX, which is something I use in all my videos. It's a very, very good tool. In fact, I wouldn't fly without it. It's that good. Uh, a couple of things you need to know if you've got Easy Dot Camera or if you just go and buy it after watching this video. Before you do anything, whenever you install a new aircraft, so I've got the F-86 Sabre here from uh, Milviz that I have to review. Whenever you get a new aircraft and you install it, run up the Easy Dock uh, Config tool. Well, let me see if I can find it down here for you. This thing, Easy CA Config. Run that up. It just makes sure that the Easy Dock camera settings are such that when you start in a new plane, you start in the cockpit as we are here. The next important thing you need to do the first time you ever install Easy Dock is actually unbind certain keys from FSX because Easy Dock replaces the view system in FSX completely. So typically, you're going to unbind the arrow keys on your keyboard up, down, left, and right. You're going to unbind page up and page down and unbind all the number pad keys because they're used within Easy Dock to control it. Make sure they're not set. None of those keys, page up, page down, the arrow keys or the number pad keys are set to anything within FSX. The reason for that is, as I said, Easy Dock replaces the view system. And so once you have those keys unbound, but then mapped in Easy Dock, you get to do neat stuff like this. So I can zoom around. If I were doing a video on this, you know, a nice artistic video, for example, I might zoom in very, very closely here and then just pan up. It's actually a little bit too close. It's shearing the graphics. There you go. And do a nice dramatic pan up and look around the cockpit and show how wonderfully detailed it is. That's what Easy Dot lets you do. It actually has a lot more uses than that though, as you've seen in my videos, it lets you very easily set up convenient views and that's what we're gonna do right now. So within Easy Dot, here it is here. A Couple of things you need to tweak before you go setting up your views. First in general settings, you have these buttons here for uh, virtual cockpit, aircraft, and world. They control how fast the camera moves. What you just saw was actually float mode, where you're floating around the cockpit. It's very slow, and for setting up camera, camera views initially to go flying, it, it's just a pain in the bum. So I typically use cinema for everything when I'm setting up. Let me just go back in the aircraft here. This is what cinema does. You can see I'm a lot quicker than I was. And there's no inertia. When I let go of the key, the view pretty much stops moving. With float, if we turn that back on here, there's inertia. It takes a while to speed up. It takes a while to slow down. Not good. So there's that. Next thing you want to do is set up your keys. Again, this is the first time you've ever used it. So as I just explained, up, down, left, right, page up, page down, control my camera. Number pad 2 puts me in edit mode. I also have A, Shift A, S, and Shift S set up. Now what they do is A will move me down through the views. Shift A moves me back up through the views. S moves me from... Uh, mode to mode, so from virtual cockpit to aircraft to world, shift S moves me back. And I usually bind those to a hat on my yoke or my joystick. So if I press up on that hat, I'll start moving up through the view list. Down would move me down through the view list. Right moves me across here. Left moves me back here. Very, very simple. But it's important those keys are not bound, obviously, within FSX. So let's go ahead and set up the views. So I want to define a flying view. The way I typically do that, and this is just Frugal's version of how it's done, all right? It's not the accepted, this is the way you do it, and you know, this is how I do it, this is what I like to do. I typically look down, find the seat, based on that, put my head where I think it should be in the aircraft, which is actually about there. Now you'll notice that by default, most of the aircraft views are actually zoomed out too far. So with my head roughly where it should be, I mean, I'm not too high, I'm not gonna bash into the canopy with my brain. Um, it's actually very hard to see anything. So. Put Easy Dock into edit mode by pressing number key two. That's on the number pad. You'll hear a beeping sound which might not come out on the video. Hopefully it does. Put it into edit mode, it starts beeping, and then adjust the view. So what I would typically do is, notice the zoom is 0.4. I normally have my views zoomed in at 0.7. That seems to be a fairly common number. Uh, 1.00 is actually the most realistic, but you can see you're jammed right up against the dials there. It's very hard to see, and you need to move too far back in the cockpit to get a decent view physically. So I set it up at 0 0.7. Gives me a pretty good view as you can see. What I might do now is hit page up just a couple of times just to give me a better view over the nose. Maybe move back a touch just a little bit. You can see I can see most of the important dials. I've got a really good view for taxiing and uh, visual flight and stuff like that. So I'm pretty happy. Press number pad 2 again to take yourself out of edit mode and then go give your camera a name. So in this case, let's call it pilot or Pilot in command. Now, it's worth talking about these buttons up here. Point to point, we'll get onto in a minute. That's the PTP button. 360 here, um, that changes how much you can look around. Now, you can hold the middle mouse button down, you can spin the camera around, or you can use track IR. Notice I've got track IR turned on here. Uh, if you have that 
click down, you can look around 360 degrees. So I can spin the camera like I'm a possessed demon, which is kind of neat. Uh, if you turn that off, you're limited to 180 degrees. I'm not going to jar your view again by trying to whisk the camera around, but I, can no, I can't turn more than 180 degrees now. Point of view, because I've rebound all my keys like my arrow keys, that lets me move around now without being in edit mode. So just sitting in a cockpit here, I can hit those number keys and page up and page down. Because I have point of view enabled, my point of view doesn't change. So I'm still looking directly forward, my point of view doesn't change. I need to hold down the middle mouse button to change my point of view. I always have it set that way, I don't see any reason not to. ML is mouse look, which is probably the most hideous feature of Track IR, uh, sorry, Easy Dock. If you turn that on, anytime you move the mouse, the view changes. Don't like that, leave that off. Z lets you zoom with the mouse at all times, which is a royal pain if you're using an aircraft that lets you use the mouse wheel to spin dials. So I leave that off. So typically my cameras are all set up like this within the cockpit, point to point, point of view, Track IR. Simple as that. Now over here we have three very important buttons. This is random effects. So. If you're in a, an aircraft, normally you'll get some bumps and jostles, not really turbulence, but just some bumps and jostles as it moves through the air. Leaving that on gives you those random bumps and jostles in the view. DHM is dynamic head movements. This responds to turbulence, it responds to G-force and all that good stuff. Your head will move appropriately. So if you bring the plane down pretty damn hard, you will see your head kind of do ugh, like that but obviously better than I just did it. CR, you turn off inside the cockpit. That stands for camera resonance, and I'll show you what that does shortly. So anyway, I've set up my pilot and command view. What I would like to do now is set up a view where I'm looking down at these dials. Very easy to do. Right click, clone the camera. Let's just call this look down. Now this view is a clone of this view. See as I change, nothing happens. So I put this into edit mode once again. I'm not going to change my zoom because that's kind of jarring as you move between the cameras. But what I am going to do is just look down. In fact, let's look down a little bit more. So I can see all of the center column now, center panel. I can see my main flight instruments and everything else. That's pretty good. Number pad 2, take it out of edit mode. Let's make another camera now. I'm going to take pilot and command again. I'm going to clone it. Now this one, I am going to call uh, center panel. And this is going to be a close-up, full-screen view of that center panel. So what I do, click into the aircraft, number pad 2, and start using the arrow keys now, not zoom. Don't adjust the zoom. It gets really awkward if you do. Just to fill up my screen with those very, very critical dials while I'm trying to fly this aircraft. Number pad 2 to take myself out of edit mode once again. Now I have three views set up. Point to point means that I fly between each view. So if I click on pilot on, in command, notice the view elegantly shifts. If I turn that off, it will jump. You see that? We don't want that. We want it flying. So now I have three views set up and the way I have my hats set up on my joysticks and yokes is I simply push the hat down and that would tip my head down to look down there and then click it again for a close in zoomed view, but not zooming. If you zoom, it's kind of jarring the way it, it actually makes that transition. So you would carry on like this. If I wanted to now, for startup purposes, I might need to see all these buttons over here. In fact, I do. For startup, I need to see this stack over here. So right click, clone the camera. Let's set this to electrical panel. And once again, click in the cockpit, number pad two, put it into edit mode, using my arrow keys now to go over here, page down to drop down now I have a wonderful view, take it out of edit mode, I have a wonderful view for looking at these important switches for starting up the aircraft right here. Pretty good. Now, I've got track IR turned on for all these views, which means while I'm in this view, I can still use track IR to look around if I so wish to. It doesn't make sense though. This view and this view, I would rather not have my random head movements and sneezing upset what I'm looking at. So I'm going to turn track IR off for these and off for these. I'm also going to turn off random effects and dynamic head movement on this and on this. Simply because when I'm looking at this view, I really want to focus on what I'm looking at. I don't really want the whole view bouncing around within the, the flight simulator. I want to be able to focus. And this is especially important for something like a 737 or an Airbus where maybe you've got a view set up to program the FMC and you're trying to click on very small buttons to set up something in the FMC. The last thing you want is the whole screen shifting around. So turn off all three of these buttons for important views like that. Leave them on for everything else. So track IR is on there. It's on there. It's off there and it's off when I do that. So I have all my views set up now. Obviously I want to set up some more views. I'm not going to waste your time doing that right now. What I do want to show you is the outside views and how that works. So what I'm going to do here, press the Y key to slew this aircraft. 
gonna hit F4 a few times, whoops, Y key. F4 a few times just to slew myself up a few thousand feet. Probably about 10, 15,000, so there's 8,000 right there. 9,000, 10,000, let's go a little bit more. Press the Y key to take it out of slew and pause. There's pause. Now, click on the outside of the aircraft. I'm going to set up two views here that I want just to show how the outside stuff works. And this is kind of important. I want track IR off for the outside views. I don't want to turn my head to look around. I can hold down the middle mouse button and look around and use the arrow keys. I don't want my head movement to do anything right there. And these are going to be used for screenshots as well. I'm going to set up this view. I'm going to call it trail left. Now, put it into edit mode. Number pad two, same as in the cockpit. Use the arrow keys to move around. Don't forget to alter the zoom. Typically for an outside view, I would zoom in to one, not 0 0.7. I want a more realistic view of the aircraft with everything proportioned and no fisheye. So I'm gonna put the camera right about here, kind of above looking down from the left. That's a nice view. That's gonna be nice on approach. Maybe move to the right a little bit. There we go. So I can see where the aircraft's going. I can see the aircraft itself. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful view. Using the rule of thirds now, I can actually move the aircraft within that view, which you can't do with a normal FSX camera view system, which is kind of neat. So maybe I'll put it there. Makes for a nice picture. Number pad two takes me out of edit mode. And now I'm going to make another view, which is actually attached to the tip of this left wing. In fact, I'm going to put it right on that light. So let's call this left wing tip. Once again, click in the sim, number pad two to go into edit mode. Now this is where things get kind of cool. I'm going to zoom in to one, like so. Using the arrow keys here and now page down to lower the camera to roughly where that beacon light is. And I want to simulate, I want a camera effect here that simulates like a GoPro camera or a handy camera physically strapped to the wing of this aircraft. So I'm going to have it, let's have it looking that way. That's a good, that's good right there. Drop it down just a touch without breaking the uh, model. Oh, I'm starting to break it so I'll lift it up a bit. Good. Now I'm going to take this out of edit mode. Now, here's the cool bit. On this view, this floating view, just looking at the aircraft, I would turn random effects off. I turn point to point off. I don't want the outside views floating from view to view. I want them to just snap. On this left wing tip view, where I have a camera actually almost physically mounted onto the frame of the aircraft, I want random effects on and I want this on, which is camera resonance. This simulates the effects of a camera being bounced around strapped to a moving aircraft and the wind outside and everything else. So let's go trail left. I'm gonna unpause the sim here and you'll notice the camera is fixed. You see that, there's no movement. It's not bouncing around, the aircraft is, but the camera's not. Now if I drop to this view, now the camera's bouncing. You can see the aircraft moving within the frame. Everything's bouncing. It really does feel like I'm physically strapped to the wing of this aircraft with a, a small handy cam, which is pretty neat. Anyway, enough of that before I plummet into the ground. And that's really all there is to it. So as I said, within the cockpit, I have point to point enabled. I have point of view enabled, so I can move around with my cursor keys if I wish to. Um, I have track IR enabled, obviously. External views, I don't have track IR. I don't have point to point enabled. I, um, I do have dynamic effects and camera resonance on external views if they are strapped to the aircraft. I turn them off if the camera is free floating. You can actually put actually random effects on a, tra on a floating camera like this. This is what it looks like. Get a little bit of movement there, not a lot, it's pretty cool. Within the cockpit though, only using random and dynamic head movements on views where it counts and where I don't want to focus on something, so pilot and command, maybe looking left, looking right, looking down certainly, not zoomed in or trying to use an FMC. So as I said, I'm not covering everything that there is to know about EasyDoc in this video, just kind of a beginner's high level overview of how I set things up. I hope that's helpful. Uh, leave me a comment in the comment section below if you have any questions and please by all means click on like if you enjoyed this video. Once again, my name is Frugal and I'll see you soon.